Good morning to all to you. Dzień dobry. Bon, buongiorno. <laughs> Good morning again. Yes, excellent. Um, my, my name is Łukasz Lamża, and I, I am dealing currently with the European City of Science. Maybe you don't know, but you have entered the European City of Science for the year 2024. So this has been a traveling circus for the past 20 years, and it has landed. So my role today for the next, I will, f I think, honestly, 30 minutes. If you have any questions, you will have time to ask them. Um, is to present to you what is like creating this and doing this. And I thought because I assume that the room is full of people interested in disseminating knowledge and spreading knowledge, and gathering all the different types of, you know, information and media, and trying to make it interesting and fun. So I will try to focus on that. This is also a part, you know, it's also my job because this just happened now. But other than that, I'm a science journalist. I speak publicly. And so I'm quite interested in how to take science and make it interesting and make it work. Make it for people, really. So maybe this you will find interesting. I will talk a little bit about the organization of the whole thing, but I will try to be brief with that and go into the more interesting stuff. So the basics. The title of the European City of Science is awarded by Euroscience, which is an organization cooperating with the European Commission. So for those of you who come from far, far away, from different continents, there's the thing called European Union, and Poland is part of the European Union, and European Commission is one of the big chunks of the European Union's organizational team, so to speak, and they do this. So they started 20 years ago, and the title is traveling, has been traveling since. Now it landed in Katowice. We don't know what's going to happen in two years. As you can see, it's every second year, so we still have time, right? So before us, it was Leiden in Holland, Trieste, Toulouse, Manchester, Copenhagen, Dublin, Torino, Barcelona, Munich, and Stockholm. Yes, yeah, so we are very European. So the, the title, if you come, I noticed there's a pin in Mongolia. Is there anyone in, from Mongolia in the room? Ah, I was wondering. Okay, so it's not going to come. The title is not going to come to Ulaanbaatar. Sorry. All right, so how, what does it look like in practice? I mean, and this is going to be possibly interesting because I heard that Wikipedia and all the other projects around Wikipedia and the Wikimedia Foundation is a quite a complex, it's a, it's a complex thing and there's a lot of people. I don't know. I edited Wikipedia 20 years ago <laughs> when the Polish Wikipedia was just starting. It was a lot of fun, but I stopped. So I don't know how Wikimedia and Wikipedia works as an organization, but I can only guess it's pretty complex. It's spread into different teams doing different things uh, all over the world, many different cultures of organization, I guess. You have to deal with many different types of problems related to money, related to information, related to data, to coding, human, human <laughs> resources and problems. Why, why am I saying this? Because if you notice, the way the European City of Science is organized is pretty tricky. Now, the impulse and the money comes from this big thing called the European Union, which has some money and, you know, power. <laughs> and they decided it goes down, so we got the money, but the title went to the city. So, sort of the first place where, where you know, the communications first started going and the money and the thing is the city of Katowice. Uh, do I have a laser? Yeah. Katowice for a change, yeah? So, so the city of Katowice. But... To make things slightly more complicated, I don't know if you took a good, nice look at the map of southern Poland, of the region. It's not really one city. I mean, you could walk out of here right now and just walk straight and you would land in a city of Chorzów and then you would land in a city of Zabrze and then you would land in a city of Gliwice and you wouldn't even notice you left a city. Yeah? It's still one big city, really. Honestly, and you could go the other way around and you could come to my city of Benjin, just a small town, 60,000 people. I have, you know, wild animals running around my house. I live in a village, essentially, right? But you could walk out of here and just go building by building, street by street by street and land 
through a couple of different cities in my city, which is tricky. So there's this thing, Nośląska Zagłębiowska Metropolia, Metropolis, which connects 41 cities <laughs> that are here. It's like a, basically, it's, you can imagine it's a three million city, but you put like a firecracker under, underneath it and just a boom, yeah, and it landed in 41 chunks separated by, you know, sometimes by meadows, sometimes by, you know. So it gets tricky. Uh, this is the Voivodeship, which is the equivalent of, you know, states or provinces, wherever you come from. So first problem <laughs> was trying to get all these institutions to cooperate. But it, it gets trickier. It gets trickier much more because now this is a uh, European city of science, right? Scientum as nobody says, yeah? And uh, the academic consortium is something that we created here based on seven main universities working in the region. So there's University of Silesia in Katowice, but there's a technical university, we have a medical university, fine arts, physical education, economy, and music, yeah? And, and they're all spread all around the place. So we, I'm saying we because I'm essentially now part of this consortium, we were given uh, the task, you know, because the politicians and the people in charge got the money, <laughs> but they said, okay, now you do it, right? Um, so have fun, yeah, you're going to get some of the money we got. <laughs> uh, no, that, 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 that's fine. And d just do it, yeah? So of course the city is doing a lot and we, we are sharing responsibilities and a significant part of the job has to be done by the city, by the metropolis, by the voivodeship, because they are organizing the thing, they manage the spaces, the buildings, the streets, we have to close off streets and these sort of things. They also deal a lot with the scientific part of the thing, they are fantastic partners. But then there are seven universities we have to cooperate with. So again, one interesting thing that I, I learned doing this, is that it's, uh, it's really tricky to get people with different ways of thinking to understand each other. It's really interesting, and if you're, if you're interested in that part of what we're doing, we can talk later, how to connect people who think like politicians with people who think like uh, accountants or lawyers and then scientists, but the word scientist this is the thing, and I think this is something that you may deal with on your daily basis. The word science means a lot of things, a lot of things to a lot of people, but it, in our case, it means equally well. It means people working with superconductors and photonics. It means people working with harps and double basses in the musical academy, and people dealing with running and movement and the Olympics, yeah, at the you know, physical education academy, university. So it's all science and it's all European city of science. So you can imagine how interesting it is trying to get all of these perspectives in one place. That's a lot of fun. Technically what's happening is a lot of things. I'm not going to bore you with going through all the list of the things that we do. It's whole year. We started on January the 1st and we're going to end on December the 31st. The thing that I am most intimately related to is this, 50 weeks in the city of science, the main year-round European City of Science Katowice program, which is essentially that each week of this year is devoted to a different idea, to a different subject. And it was a lot of fun creating it. Uh, we started in uh, March last year, uh, February, March last year, the, the way we did it, again, you may find it interesting because you're organizing big things, I understand. The way we did it is that we sent a lot of emails to a lot of people on those universities, on those seven universities, and we asked a number of open-ended questions, such as, are you doing something interesting out there? Well, maybe. Do you have festivals, like science festivals? Do you have people who are excellent with children? 
like in you know, a communication and teaching and these sort of things. Do you have some interesting scientific projects? Do you have some non-scientific projects like artistic projects? Or do you know some institutions around in the area that you like cooperating with? A large number of questions. And we push them and we push them and push them with sticks until they send us the emails back with a lot of tables, Excel tables, sorry, spreadsheet, LibreOffice uh, spreadsheet tables. And it was fun because w what we got <laughs> was this, this output, this disk, online disk, full of things. Essentially, the way I think about it, because I was given the funny task of taking all this data and trying to create 50 different weeks based on this, on this potential that's out there, which was a lot of fun. Uh, it was difficult, but the way I decided to do it is by focusing on people, not on ideas, but on people. And again, if, you, if, you, if you're doing stuff, you probably learned a long time ago that, you know, moving AI aside, basically anything that happens is done by a person. <laughs> it sounds so trivial, right? But if you want to do something, you have to find a person. If you don't find a person, you, you're not going to do anything, right? So... The way I thought about this is that we're not going to have a week about humor or love or mountains or, you know, space, voice, knowledge, you know, industry 4.0, climate, robots and so on. If I can't find a person who will do it, a person who understands organs, in this case, <laughs> the organ week is a major cooperative between the Musical Academy and the Silesian Univers Medical University <laughs> because we are combining organ music with organ transplants. This already happened, by the way. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Seven weeks, uh, seven days of a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But I was also surprised by how easy it, wa it was to go to the medical university. And I mean, these are serious people. I mean, they are doctors. They do operations. It's a difficult, it's a tough, it's a serious job. But when we said, listen, um, there's the thing, you, you, you said, you wrote in your you know, thing six months ago, right? remember? That you, you have people who are doing organ transplants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, there's going to be this thing called Organ Week, but the inauguration is going to be in the Musical Academy of this huge pipe organ. And so can you come and sort of say something that's a little bit about organ transplants and a little bit about organ music? And nine times out of ten, the reaction was, sure, excellent. it's a funny idea, I like it, good. Yeah? Because, again, the, I was surprised by how willing these people are to go outside of the boxes and do fun stuff. And also, you know, I mean, it's good, it's good quality stuff. These are academic people, these are people who know their business, know their job, know their science. But I was really, I mean, I'm, I was afraid at first that I'm going to call all these people and they will tell me, you know, I'm sorry, I'm a researcher, I do this and I don't want to, you know, make it seem like silly. Yeah? No, 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 they, they, they were very open-minded. So it was a lot of fun talking to those people. And again, the thing that I, you know, I was left with, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's August, so it's still going on currently. That's boredom, week of boredom. Yeah. It, about this in... Yeah, about this in a minute. Uh, but it's still going on, but we basically know it's going to be fine because we have tested this on 20 weeks. We have done all the, you know, reporting and paperwork. We are, we've seen everything basically right now. So it's going to be fine. But the thing I will probably be left with is this, this very important idea that you basically have to find a people you have to find a person to do it and and infect them with your idea of it of your enthusiasm and if they understand if they really understand what you mean then it's going to be fine so from august till november 2023 what i did was basically have this idea in my mind and call all those people because each of those weeks is organized by two main people. One of them is the curator of the week and there's the producer of the week. And the curator of the week is always someone with a scientific title, a member of the academic consortium, a you know, scientist, so to speak, who 
who talked to me, in specifically individually to me, because this is, I think this is important, that you would have a single vision, and to have a single vision, you need to have a small group of people, and there has to be a direct communication and understanding, and I think that without it, it would just break down, because everybody would do their own thing. This is one thing that we are dealing with sometimes, because in some cases, I'm not going to point fingers, but in some cases, it turned out that uh, they just want to do their thing, and they don't want to do our thing, so there was a little bit of negotiation. Yes, I understand you're doing a fantastic thing, but this will be called Ha 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 Week, and this is a separate event. It's a science festival, really. So you have to do this and this and this and this and this. Okay, but they usually got it easily. So interesting, interesting thing. I know there's this subject of, uh, of, of working with AI, which I find fascinating. There's going to be a session after this, I was told. I'm not going to be present, but the idea that I, I, me personally, I would like to put on this table, based on my experience, is that I cannot possibly imagine doing this with anything other than human beings. Uh, because I think that the, the, the whole thing and the integrity and the meaning and the... And the and, uh, and the unity of the whole thing is based on understanding, on human-human understanding. And, and I cannot, for the life of me, imagine <laughs> uh, reaching out to an algorithm uh, that will spew out very nice-looking text, but I don't see this element of understanding, of, of communication, of really, you know, eye to eye, I know what you mean, Yes, I understand. It's going to be... Okay, good. Yeah, This is just my two cents. Yeah, After that, the content... I mean, sometimes we create such silly content that can be created by, you know, 1980s algorithm, really, right? I mean, no disrespect to Wikipedia and its editors, but I mean, if you put, click random article like a hundred times, I mean, 20 of those are going to be, right, cities in Iran, right? <laughs> so, yeah, it's not that difficult, right? Okay, jokes aside. So it's, this was a lot of fun. And the future of Science Observatory. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be quick. So, um, but wait a minute. Do I want to say something more about this? No, maybe late. All right. So this is it. Yeah, it's happening. It's a lot of fun. Ah, boredom week. Yes, Bo right now is the boredom week. This is the one week that was empty for a very long time. <laughs> Why? Because nobody wants to work in summer. Remember, this is organized by an academic consortium, which basically means people working at academia, at universities. Which means, again, people who do their job very well up until June, <laughs> and then they start slowing down, yeah? And then there's August, <laughs> July and August, and, and they are not there, right? They're away. They get the paychecks, but they are not there. Yeah, so tricky. Yeah, it was very tricky. These were the most difficult phone calls. I mean, oh yeah, you have so wonderful ideas. Excellent. You you do this and you do this. Would you mind organizing a whole week? We're gonna give you money and help. Yes, of course. When is this week gonna be? Well, <laughs> in August. <laughs> well. Not so, not so much. I'll call you. I, I'll never call you later. Yeah, that's right. So we try this and this and this and this and this. There's week of Olympism, Olympic week. We we couldn't do it during the Olympics for different reasons, but you know this is during August. They said okay, physical education. Yeah, we're gonna be there. We tried this, this and this and this and this, but this was empty. Fifth till eleventh August, just nobody would take this week, and it was like an empty, and. So I said, okay, let's do a week about nothing, the week of nothing. And we will call it the week of nothing, and we're going to do nothing. But then somebody said, but we're going <laughs> to get killed by the European Commission, because they will ask questions. Oh, this is very interesting. Oh, very nice. Strokey beard meeting. Yes. And this week, how many events did you do? How many beneficiaries did you have? How many money did you spend and on what did you spend the money? And we couldn't really sell the idea of spending money on nothing for nobody. So it ended up being boredom week, which turned out to be great fun. I'm, I'm leaving you just to go and have some fun with those people. We have psychologists. Uh, yesterday evening, <laughs> we had, a, uh, we had a, uh, an experiment. How long can you do nothing? 
So we, uh, we invited people and the task was to do nothing for as long as you can. And it was interesting, it was very interesting. And then there was the whole lecture about, you know, meditation, mindfulness and, and so on and overstimulation. All right. Yes. And this brings me to one more thing I would like to tell you about this interesting thing. Um, and this is sort of my own personal obsession as a science journalist, because I, I am a science journalist in the very traditional sense of actually writing text that will be printed on paper. So, you know, 19th century type of dying type of journalism. I also deal with YouTube and I, you know, I, I have a channel and so on. So I'm good. I'm fine. But still, I, I have a problem with traditional science journalism and the way it, it, you know, it's continued into, uh, into internet is that there is a short list of subjects that are traditionally considered interesting and sexy. It's a very short list. I mean, there's, there's, there's black holes, you probably know, and there's Big Bang and some particles, you know, accelerating them and colliding. There's cancer. There's always batteries. I mean, there's always batteries, right? There's, there's lithium batteries. And this is basically it. If you, want to, if you want to have a lot of clicks, you have to use, you know, a, there's only a couple of subjects that are really sexy and interesting to people. And this has been tested. And people, meaning general audience, they have this enormous fascination with this very small number of subjects. And it's, it's difficult. It's difficult for a journalist who wants to write about something else to sell it. Because, why? Well, because it's all dictated by the number of clicks. Now, in Wikipedia, it's no problem, right? You can check for each article, right? How many times has it been seen in the past 100 days or, uh, or a month? And if the result is 25, nobody's going to get fired, yeah? But if I write something that's going to be clicked 25 times, I may be fired. So during this, I thought, okay, let's do this the right way, meaning let's see who the scientists really are. And this leads to a more profound idea than my you know, bitter commentary on the human mind and media, which is that science is pretty big, pretty interesting, but it's not what you would expect it to be. Which is, I mean, when I started reading all these memos that we got and all these spreadsheets, I was just fascinated that science is really everywhere in this different sense that I thought I knew. I thought I knew I did this for, for 10 years and I could, you know, stand on stage and recite, yes, you know, physics is everywhere because we're all made of elementary particles. No, it doesn't work like this. I mean, there's science in the way these panels have been designed because they have a certain shape and there's a reason they have a certain shape, it's acoustics. So this has been modeled. There's air conditioning in the room, which is pretty intense to be honest. And there's, there's also science in at what temperatures humans perform best and at which temperatures voice performs best. And I know it because I talked to worse, well, brief, brief, and voice week to those folks who study it. And there's people at the technical university who do the acoustic modeling. And there's a, a cathedral, you know, it's like this unit at the university that deal with air conditioning. And I was just like swimming in the sea of institutions and people who do, do research and things like that. And human voice and temperature and walls and buildings and little pieces of metal that are everywhere and they're doing stuff and different types of plastics and so on. And music and art and the design and history and, and this. So this was my big revelation that if we want to promote science, if we want people to get interested in science, then we are lying if we are focusing on the small subset of sexy ideas. And now I think it as a sort of systemic problem that I think that young people get the wrong information about what science really is because they are being given role models such as Albert Einstein or if you live in Poland Marie Sklodowska or if you live in France Marie Curie yeah like but but these are not realistic role models for 99.9% .9 of scientists 
Yes, because scientists don't discover new things, really. <laughs> Rarely. Sometimes a little bit. Yeah? But it's not... I mean, scientists, mostly what they do is they perfect what exists to make it smarter, to make it better, to learn a little bit more, to dig a little bit deeper. So there are these scientists who study the history of Katowice and they are fascinating people who will, you know, uncover an unknown history from the history of 18th century Katowice, you know, merchants, for example, and it's a fascinating story, but they didn't discover fire or a new particle. Yeah, they discovered a new person that lived in the city. So I just thought, let's try to spread this idea and infuse this whole thing with this idea. And so what we did was we decided to give voice to the actual scientists who actually do this thing and they are interesting people I told you they're fascinating people they want to outreach because usually nobody listens to them and nobody invites them to media and this was the biggest joy of what I'm doing right now is that we invite people who do these little 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 thingies like this little brick in this huge building of science, they are not at the top, they are not in the limelight, they are not the famous physicists, or, you know, they didn't, inv you know, invent cure for cancer. But they, you know, they are dealing with glues, or sleeping, they are psychologists dealing with sleeping, and they come, we give them rooms, we invite people, people come, this is amazing to me that people actually come to these meetings, normal people come to these meetings, they, in, they, they talk to each other, they do their thing, then we have media, we have a strong media team, and to me this is, this is one of the best things that happen, happens here is that people who spend their whole careers hardworking and doing fantastic things, but things that are not sexy, now they come and we have microphones waiting for them, yes, I am from the radio and have contact with good televisions, good radios, good podcasts, and they have, it, you know, this is the first time in their lives when somebody, you know, interviews them, yeah? So that's fun. Okay, uh, and, and just to, f f you know, wrap up, this is something that will happen, this is going to happen, this hasn't happened yet, because there was this question about what next, because we have spent a lot of effort and a lot of money on doing the European City of Science. Um, the city did a lot of fantastic things, developing and creating new spaces. So we had to create infrastructure and, you know, they have their own thing. But at the universities, we also asked the question, okay, so what's next? There's so much effort and there's this momentum and then there's going to be New Year's Eve and we're going to have a depression on the 1st and 2nd of January 2025 because, you know, cricket sound, right? What now? There's been so much happening. So this is one of the things that, that we will try to do. A tiny little element. Because I'm talking about this because it's mine. <laughs> this is mine. Uh, just to try to, to retain the human potential. And the idea is as follows. What you see in front of you is a map of science created on a data that came from those folks. This is the Center for Security and Emerging Technology in Georgetown University, Washington, D.C., United States of Northern America. And these folks, they gather data about papers and their citations and create these wonderful bit, you know, data sets and they were kind enough to share some of their data sets with us. It is basically um, dots and each dot is a cluster of people and papers. So if you zoom in, there is, for example, cluster number 1068, chemistry, you know, key concepts. It's created automatically, so there's a lot of noise, but basically this is a part which is about delivering drugs in uh, nanocapsules. I don't mean drug trafficking in capsules, I mean delivering in, in you know, the good drugs, yeah? The legal ones. So, uh, so this is one of those blobs, yeah? So there's a lot of blobs, and each blob is a subject, a scientific subject. So in this case, it's nanoparticles for drug delivery. So, we have this, right? So what is it? This is a map of science. So now when I see it again in the same uh, sort of paradigm that I told you before, what I see is I see people. For me, each dot is people. And 
when I when I when I thought about what would be the best thing that could happen is that if we were able to pick up young people that live in the region, there's you know three four million people living in the region, so something below one million, you know, five hundred thousand students, pupil students, who who some of them will maybe want to become scientists, but I thought okay, so they get these weird role models like you can become the next Einstein. But you won't, <laughs> yeah. But you can become the next Einstein, yeah. So they try to think, oh, I should rethink space time. This is what I'm supposed to be doing, right? I should cure cancer. These are very good ideas, and some of people will do it, but a tiny minority of people will do it, and all the 99% of those who don't, they don't get realistic role models and ideas of what science really is. So what I would like to do is to create something like this, but which is readable. So it's going to tell you right away that, you know, this is medicine, this is computer science, this is, you know, physics, this is uh, bio and biotech, and this is social sciences, this is Bronze Age, somewhere around here, you know, archaeology, earth sciences, concrete, and, you know, hydrocarbons. Now I'm very friendly with the map. Uh, and I want people to become friendly with the map so they can see and ha, huh, I was always interested in maybe this and this and this sounds interesting and they zoom in and there's a problem of how to get coal from underground, you know, something we were dealing with in this region quite a lot. But then you dug it out, what next, yeah? So there's a lot of open problems. Yeah? So what I want this to become is this zoomable thing, this online thing that we will spread into schools and teach people how to use them, but we especially aim for students students at universities. So people who start their university education, undergraduates, who, who are being taught a lot of things, but one of the things that consistently comes out in polls is that they don't know why they are doing it. So they come to the first year of physics or chemistry or biology and they say, hey, so this is a long, let's say biology, this is a long list of Latin names of flowers and plants, so please learn it. Yeah. So they do, yeah. So this is all the biochemical pathways of a cell. This is a Krebs cycle, this is a citric cycle, and this thing, la -ta 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 -ta. please learn 150 weird names by next week because you're gonna be tested on this. Okay, I will, I will do. But nobody tells them you will need this because there's this problem to be solved. There's this metabolic disease that we don't know how it works. And it has to do something with the, with the enzymes that do this bit of the Krebs cycle, you know? So we are here right now. There's this group of people in France who are doing this right now. This is people in Australia who started their own project about this problem. And there's a guy or a gal in Katowice, believe it or not, she published a paper about this subject just two years ago, so she knows this stuff. This is her email, yeah? So what I would like to see is something that begins with a basic level of science, something like, this is about the human body, yeah? Okay, so this is about organs, this is about metabolism, and, and we'll start a serious job, something, something around here, at this level of detail, yeah? So metabolic diseases, you know, something that a student or an advanced teenager before university would be interested in potentially, and I would like to have these people sucked in into the real actual science. Because I learned from my own experience that by the end of the thing, what is at the, at the, at the end point, is interesting open problems, is uh, fantastically interesting scientific papers, is people who do this and they are interested in outreach, they want to be heard, they want to be talked to, they, they, they are very happy to cooperate. And if they don't, that's their problem. I mean, I, I don't want to deal with them. If they don't want to deal with me, I don't want to deal with them. So we're going to bring a lot of young people to <laughs> move them out if they don't want to do it the right way. <clears throat> yeah. So, and, and money, and there's money in it because there's, you know, grant money and all the different things that you can, you can get money, you can work, you can earn a living doing this. Yeah? But what I always thought, there's, there's the lack of this communication from this elementary interest in science. And I'm not talking kindergarten, I'm not talking elementary school. What I'm thinking is this, you know, you have to sort of start at the level, let's say, of high school. Yeah? But 
I know because I teach philosophy in high school and I know that there are people who are 15, 16, 17 who already know, they feel in their minds this call to, you know, to learn, to find out. They do their own 3D printing and biotech. Yeah? So what I would like to see is something they can go <coughs> and they will be led into the scientific jargon into the people who are there and so on and so on and so on. So it's an open project. It's, uh, it's something which, it's, it's a big project. It's going to start this year. In December, I will present in this very building, there's going to be something called the K Science Festival, Silesian Science Festival. This is one of the Europe's largest science festivals. So you are all, of course, invited to come. If there's anything related even remotely to Wikipedia or Wikimedia, uh, you would like to present at a really huge scientific festival for thousands. I, I'm going to say tens of thousands of people here in this building in Kavica. It's going to happen in December. There's still a place for you in this thing. And I will probably present something more than just this still. Yeah? But the basic idea is I want this to live. Yeah? Because we have so much fantastic uh, people, so much effort, so much fun so much energy, yeah? And I met all these fantastic people. You can just imagine, I mean, just pick, just pick one at random. Just pick one week at random and just imagine how fantastic, interesting people, how fantastic, interesting problems and papers and science is in this week. And it's true. So, so then there's the thing of making it, you know, live its own life. Because it's not just a year, yeah? A year is very quick. I mean, I don't know what is the average age of people in the room, but there's this effect that as you get older, a year gets shorter, right? So I'm, I'm 39, I'm 39, which basically means that I'm just for 40 in a minute, <laughs> yeah? And then I'm going to be 41 and I'm going to, you know, wake up and I'm 43 again, yeah? So, so I'm, I'm at this age, so I'm thinking in seasons, yeah? like a gardener, <laughs> yeah? When you think in years, then, then I, I think it's fun to imagine. Okay, so thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, I think we, we can handle it. <laughs> There's a microphone in front because we, uh, first of all, the acoustics, I mean, it's a big room, and the second, we are being transmitted. So if you ask me a question just from there, then the people listening, you know, they're not going to know. So if you have anything, come. There's a microphone over here. But so, thank you very much. Yes. You have to earn your right to ask questions by walking. Yeah. And sorry for being uh, out of breath. Um, can you tell me about at what extent do you uh, consider or uh, think of using uh, Creative Commons licensing on what you are doing so that also these uh, marvelous weeks could be uh, uh, of of a public good in the digital world? Yeah, good question. I didn't mention it, but uh, it is our policy that everything is open, meaning none of the events that happened are paid. You just come. Everything is published, everything is publicated. If we produce something during, we don't, we don't produce much text, but if we produce something, it's published openly. So, for example, each week has its own episode of a podcast. We have a podcast which is, you know, interviews with people who do these things, and it's just open. You can just, just use it, yeah? So, yeah, definitely this is something that we are thinking about. This is going to be open. I want all the texts that will, because this will be accompanied by, by text, yeah? This has to, yeah. I want all this to be produced on a Creative Commons license. Uh, I will probably have to, we will probably have to uh, create images, um, infographics. I think this is something that I always found that, I mean, Wikipedia has a lot of fantastic infographics, but it's spread out when, wherever someone uh, felt like, or, you know, there was a talented person interested in a given subject. But what I always thought, and this, but this is my private obsession, is that we, I mean, we need infographics. I was wondering if there's a, like an infographics department uh, in Wikipedia, but if there isn't, there definitely should be. I mean, I mean, people learn by seeing infographics basically better than by reading text. 
and you can really capture so much knowledge in a picture. But you have to pay a graphics designer to do it. I mean, when I, I edited Wikipedia a lot when I was 16, 17. And you can do it using the incremental method, right? You, 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 know, you write, and then somebody after you writes a better thing, and so on, and so on, and so on. And it's fine. But you cannot create an infographic like this. I mean, there, it has to be designed from scratch by someone who understands color and proportion and the human mind and human eyes and so on. So unfortunately, when people who are not graphic designers cr draw infographics, they are horrible. They are ugly and they don't inform, they misinform. This is the, 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 this is the sad truth. So I, I even had this idea and I sold this idea initially to people in the project to have one infographic created for each of those weeks specifically for Wikipedia. And I sold this idea too late. We didn't have money to do it when I, when I thought about this. I thought about this in November last year. And I thought, okay, so there's like virus week, yeah? And there are, I, I looked, there are pretty nice pictures of viruses, you know, cross-section of a virus, the elements and so on and so on. But you can always, yeah, you can, you can always find something that's not visualized well. And viruses are pretty inter interesting and important, right? So I thought it would be fun if we had like a team of graphics designer creating uh, 50, because this is 50 weeks, 50 high quality creative commons, open, vectorized, fantastic, uh, you know, infographics, one for each week. But we, we didn't do this because there was so much to be done and it just landed there. So if anyone is interested in, in doing something like this, for example, hello, why not? Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm sorry it was a very winded answer to your question, but yes, definitely uh, not everything can be done like this because universities have their own intellectual property rules. And I'm just a small fish in a big ocean. So whenever I'm anywhere, I always push for creative commons and, and, and we try to do it, but sometimes uh, it's not that easy. Anyone? Okay. So thank you again. Have a lovely day and good luck.